everybody. Welcome back to Bentley House. I'm Aira and today we're going to be making a wall safe, a miniature wall safe, that actually opens and closes and also locks in a way. <laughs> the wall safe I'm making in today's video is actually going to be going into my captain's quarters eventually. This miniature was actually inspired by today's sponsor. Yes, we have a sponsor for the first time ever and that is June's Journey. When it comes to working in my miniature projects, I am constantly inspired by everything around me. I'm inspired by books I read, I'm inspired by movies, TV, art, and yes, even video games. I love to play video games, and June's Journey is a game that you can play on your phone or personal device. When they reached out to me, I was immediately intrigued, downloaded the game, and was stunned by the artwork that I saw within the game itself. And of course, if you've been a longtime follower of the channel, you know I love storylines, which also goes along with this game. It is kind of a mystery whodunit following June Parker, who's trying to figure out who murdered her sister and her husband. It is a low stress, seek and find game where you're constantly looking at scenes, and the more you play, the harder the scenes get. For me, this is where the inspiration comes in. All those little details that get added as you go along in the game are something that I can really appreciate in my own work. For example, if there is a tree that I'm creating in one of my scenes, why not add something more so that it's not just a tree? Maybe there's a carving in the tree. Maybe there's something hidden beneath the root. As I was playing along, I ended up being very inspired by a wall safe that you encounter at the end of chapter one. If you've been following along with the captain's quarters, you will know that the captain is a time traveler who has a love for the 17th, 18th century. But there has been much discussion in the comments about how does he time travel? Does he have a device? Does he have a time traveling panel within the captain's quarters? And so I thought whatever his time traveling device may be, it would probably be locked up in a very secure location, AKA a wall safe. And so when I saw this wall safe as I was playing June's Journey, I knew uh, I, I wanted to make it. <laughs> it's been a while since I've made a miniature with working pieces, so this was a challenge that I was really excited to take on. So let's get started. To begin, I'm sketching out my ideas while referencing the original safe from the game. It's not going to be exactly the same. I am adding a f one more dial. Uh, the inside is definitely going to look a little bit different because in the game it's covered up, but you will be able to see the mechanism when the door is open. The hinges might be a little bit different. Definitely there's not going to be as much decoration on the face, but it's enough for me to get started on this project. I'm going to begin by constructing the door because that ends up being the most important part of the entire safe. It's what makes the safe work, essentially. I'm creating three different squares on map board. This is the material that I'm using. I will make sure to put all the dimensions on screen in case you want to make one for yourself. I see I have put them on pencil, but they're not very easy to see. So I will make sure and put those in text on screen for you. I'm cutting those out with a very sharp X-Acto knife and trying to keep them as precise as possible. The two smaller squares will make up the inside of the door and the larger square will be the outside of the door. They will all be glued together and the smaller squares need to be glued centered in the back of the larger square. This allows for the larger square to have a lip around it, and when the door is closed, it gives just a better fit to the safe overall. I'm going to be gluing them together with tacky glue, and then I will make sure and put a heavy weight on top of them as they dry. This will keep all the pieces from warping because of the glue, so we don't want any warp when it comes to the mat board. After it's dried completely, I'm just going to run it along some sandpaper so that I can round out each of the four sides. The next step will be to start constructing the mechanism that is going to work on the door. 
First, I need to figure out where I am going to put the axis that's going to rotate when the front part of the mechanism is turned. So this is going to be made out of a toothpick. I'm going to be using a drill bit that is about the same width as the toothpick, and I am going to drill straight through all three layers of mat board. It may not look like it, but please note that my fingers are well out of the way of the drill bit here. I am very cautious about that. So, After the drill has gone all the way through, I can check it with the toothpick and make sure that it fits correctly. I don't want it to be too loose, but I also don't want it to be too tight. Now I will give you a warning, this next part doesn't actually end up in the final build. I try to make, I'm just gonna call it the rotating crank. Um, it's like the circular part, the front part of the wall safe. Hold on, I'm just gonna look that up real quick. Okay, I looked it up. <laughs> I've seen it called both a wheel and a handle. So I'm gonna call it the wheel handle so we know what we're talking about. I'm creating this wheel handle from polymer clay but it doesn't actually end up being the one that I use for the safe. And the reason I'm leaving this in is because I do like to share when things don't work for me the first time. I'm not as well versed with polymer clay as I am with other materials. That doesn't mean that I don't like to try it out every now and then and try to figure out more processes and uses and someone one of you may be watching this and thinking oh I know what you did wrong I would do it this way but um, so you know I can share it and someone else maybe would be able to do it better but for me this did not work out and I'll show you why I baked it and I liked the back I thought it worked well the front uh, did not look so great so I was a little flustered with that. I didn't quite know how to fix it. I'm definitely still learning. I'm not giving up on polymer clay, but I knew in this instant that I could use paper, get the same effect, and paper is just something I'm more comfortable with. I have all these punches. I tend to collect punches from garage sales, estate sales, and I am always looking for different sized circle punches. I may have quite a, like all the sizes. I, I don't know if I can have all the sizes of punches, but what I did is I took the polymer clay wheel handle that I created and I found circles that would work. I cut out the interior circle first and then I used a larger circle punch to punch around it to create several circular punches that I can create the wheel handle out of. I just happened to have some black cardstock and since I know I'm probably going to be doing a black base coat on everything, I just went ahead and used that color cardstock. Now I'm taking all of the individual pieces that I cut out and gluing them together to create a stack of paper until I'm happy with the thickness. I also cut out several smaller circles that are going to be the interior of my wheel handle. Now I'm going to take, very similar to the way I did the polymer clay handle, I'm using some toothpicks and I'm just going to chop them to the correct size. I think I ended up cutting four, but that worked out because one of them was a little bit too long. This can take some fine tuning, but I ended up using three of them and I just glued each little piece of toothpick in between the larger circle and the smaller circle. I do think the axis toothpick that was put into the polymer clay wheel handle is a lot more sturdy because it's actually baked into the polymer clay. So in order to do the same thing on the paper, I used a mixture of gel super glue and tacky glue to get it to stick, but it should create a pretty strong bond. Probably not as strong as the polymer clay though. Now I am creating the individual dials and I'm showing you all the circles I layered up to get the thickness of the dial I wanted. And so if you wanted to try this out, this was just a bunch of different circles. Again, I'm sure you could do this in polymer clay, but um, paper and I just get along a little bit better. And so I tend to just go for paper when I can. 
I made three of these to be individual dials that will go on the front of the safe. They will not be functional, only the wheel handle will actually do anything. Before I glue the dials in place, I want to make sure and put the wheel handle into the door so I make sure I have everything spaced out correctly. I did feel like I needed a spacer between the wheel handle and the face of the door, so I put some super glue on this small bead. I made sure it was a size that the toothpick could go through. So now I have a spacer that will keep the wheel handle from hitting the face of the door. I'm now finished with all of the exterior door pieces so I can go ahead and paint them. I'm going to do a base coat of black acrylic paint on both the door and all of the pieces, except not the dials. I don't really need to paint the dials since they're already black from the black paper. I'm going to use metallic finishes over the black base coat. I tend to like black underneath my metallic paints, but you can use all sorts of different colors to get different effects. I'm using an antique copper metallic on the door, and to help the handle and the dials stick out from the door itself, I am painting those with a silver. That just helps your eye see the details a little bit better when they're not all the same metallic color. I also added a little brass paint to the interior of the dials. I'm going to let that all dry before putting it together. Here's the piece constructed, and as you can see, the wheel turns pretty well. I glued down the dials, and now all the exterior pieces are complete. So now we need to work on the interior pieces, of which the wheel handle will be very important. That one will not actually be officially glued on until I have glued the working parts to the back of the door. What you're seeing here, I wrote see-through next to this because you're actually kind of looking through the door front. So what I'm going to create is actually going to be a mirror image. And so I realize that's confusing, but I will try to explain it as best as possible. I'm going to be using these craft matchsticks to create the door pieces that will move. My plan is to have one piece that rotates back and forth with the wheel handle, and the piece that's rotating actually pushes another piece in and out the side of the door. I actually end up making the center piece not out of a matchstick, but out of a piece of mat board. The reason I do this is because I can put the drill bit through the mat board a little easier than the matchstick. I was just afraid eventually the matchstick might break because it was a bit thinner than the mat board. Now that this piece has a hole, I can put it onto the wheel handle, and as I move the wheel handle back and forth, this piece will move back and forth. I am using a matchstick for this other piece, and as you can see, it will be pushed by the rotating piece so that it moves back and forth. I am going to be needing a joint that will be able to move and not come apart over time. For this, I'm using some embroidery thread. I wrapped it around and glued it onto the piece of mat board, and then I'm cutting it a little bit short and I'm going to glue both sides to the other matchstick piece. This is going to allow the embroidery thread to move back and forth, creating a flexible joint that will both push the piece out and bring the piece back whenever I want the wheel handle to retract the bar. I have glued two other shorter matchsticks on the back of the safe door so that it forces the one that's moving back and forth to stay in one certain place. It just helps restrict its movement so it's not flopping all over the place. I also created one more matchstick at the bottom and this just keeps the wheel handle from being able to be turned too far to where something might break. So it just is a stop basically. All of the stationary pieces are I am painting black to match the door, and the piece that actually moves I am painting silver, and I don't know why, this was just a choice that I made. 
To finalize this, I am going to simply cut off any excess on the wheel handle. I don't need too much of that toothpick sticking into the safe. I'm cutting that off and then I am going to be adding a large daub of glue so that stays in place. And I'm also going to be adding some more of that black cardstock over the two boundary pieces that I had previously glued on. This will keep the mechanism from popping out into the interior of the safe. So that once that's done, this is my working mechanism. Oh, here's where I add the glue. <laughs> I'm using some gel super glue and I'm just putting it over the small piece of the wheel handle that's sticking through the mat board. And once it's dry, I can test it out and make sure that it's working smoothly. So far it is, and hopefully it will stay that way. So now the difficult part is out of the way. We can focus on the safe body itself. That's basically just going to be a box in which to install the door onto. I will put again the dimensions on the screen so that you can see them clearly. I am going to put them so that the two shorter pieces are inside the two longer pieces and they should actually make a perfect square once they are glued together. Once that's dry, I am going to make the back piece. Again, I will put the dimensions on screen. And of course you can change this to whatever size you want. If you want a taller safe, you can do that. If you want a smaller one, a wider one, a weird shape safe, um, definitely go for it. You can change the dimensions. Just make sure you change the dimensions of your door as well. So now my door fits perfectly on top of the box. I decided I wanted to make the brim of the box just a little bit wider. I'm going to be using my easy cutter to cut 45 degree angles and I'm going to be gluing these pieces straight onto the front edge of the box. Making this edge around the box opening is going to give me plenty of room to attach my hinges and it's also going to make it easier to install into the captain's quarters later down the line. So this is the finished piece. I'm going to let that dry before I continue on. Here's how the door looks sitting on the front and I think, I think it'll work. The next thing I have to do is make a hole in the box structure so the deadbolt of the lock can actually lock through somewhere. So I'm marking a hole right where I think this deadbolt is going to come through the wall and I am going to carefully cut it out. I actually used my drill to drill through and make it a little bit easier. And as you can see, the deadbolt goes right through the opening and this is what will lock my door. Once I have that finished, I can go ahead and do a base coat. I am just going to leave it uh, just a plain black for right now. Now it's time to work on the hinges that are going to be holding the door. I am using some of these small cylindrical beads and some sewing pins and a strip of paper to create the hinges themselves. I made the strip of paper the same width as the beads and I'm going to space them apart and glue each bead to the paper. This is just plain computer paper. I figured it'd be a little bit easier to bend than cardstock. Once the beads are dry on the paper, I'm going to cut them apart and then I'm slowly going to add glue all around and then fold the paper over the bead, making sure to smash it on one side so that it goes flat. I found these to be plenty strong with just using tacky glue, but you can always harden them with super glue if you would like. So here's one basic hinge made, and I'm making sure that the pin will go through it. Once I have all four made, I can start to shape them into the hinges I want to make. I'm going to snip it off to the length I would like, and then I do go back over and just snip off the corners just to give them a little bit more of a realistic shape. Each hinge will turn out looking just like this. Now I'm going to use two of them for each hinge. However, I'm only going to glue one of them to the pin, and this is what's going to allow it to move. 
As you're constructing each hinge, you want to make sure you're putting the two pieces on in an opposite direction. And so one will show the rounded of the barrel and one will look a little bit more flat. If you're doing this, you'll be able to tell, you'll, you'll be able to see what I'm talking about. Once I have them on and have the correct length for the sewing pin, I'm going to cut off any excess. Make sure to use a paper so you can catch the needle part. You don't want it flying off. I'm now adding super glue to the pin and I glued the bottom hinge to the pin. Once that's dry, I can go ahead and do a base coat. I decided to do these in a silver metallic to match the wheel handle. Now I can add the loose half of the hinge onto the pin without gluing it. I am only going to be gluing it to the safe door itself and I'm gluing the one that's glued to the pin to the box construction. So the two halves of the hinge itself are not glued to each other. This does mean that the door is removable if you lift it up off of the pins and that's okay. <laughs> that might help you later down the road if you need to make something in the safe, but according to gravity the hinges should be okay just sitting on top of each other. And here is the working safe, and I really like how it turned out. I think I definitely could have done some things a little bit better, maybe made it a little bit more fancy, but in the end, I'm happy with the build, and I'm looking forward to, in the future, putting it into the captain's quarters and possibly putting a time-traveling device in there. Let me know in the comments what do you think he uses to travel? Is it something mystical or is it something mechanical? Uh, it has to be something that fits in the safe. <laughs> so now we are going to be looking at some mail that came in for the captain. This is always my favorite part of the captain's videos. This book was sent by Ben T. from Quebec. It's meant to be a book that travels along with the captain and has possibly been dropped in the water a few times. I definitely think the captain would have a few of those. And this one is blue with gold details and fits perfectly on the captain's shelves. I'm putting these on the lower level of the captain's quarters for the first time ever because um, I imagine some books will go down here. I don't know which ones, but some will. This book was sent by Dorcas M. from North Carolina, and she says that it is packed full of maps and that I should be able to pull the clasp off. And I must tell you, I am incredibly scared of doing this. I don't want to ruin the book. It is beautiful just how it is, but I do look forward to the day I can get the clasp off and discover all the treasures inside. She also has an Etsy store, which I will put the name on screen, and sent me these beautiful pieces, the little bird and the little sculpture that I think will look great on the captain's shelf of antiquities. This book was sent by Annette R. from Puerto Rico, and I'm really excited about this one because I've been to Puerto Rico. And um, it's brown and it has the name Puerto Rico on the side. And I love all the pages and just the aging of this piece. Really, really beautiful. She also has an Etsy site, which I will put on screen. She made this beautiful medallion for the captain's collection, which holds a lot of meaning and power to her ancestors from Puerto Rico. These next few pieces were all sent by Brent W. from Georgia, and this was an entire package that came with a story of its own called Destiny's Tale. It's a little bit too long for me to read here, but it will stay within the walls of the captain's quarters so that I can bring it out and remember the tale of the destiny as it discovered the Fiji mermaid in a small iron cage at the back of a cave. He even included a candle, which was mentioned in the story, a small compass, and believe it or not, also the Fiji mermaid itself. This is a really amazing creation. I'm not quite sure I have room for the Fiji mermaid and the case itself. If possible, I would love to include it, but he may end up outside of the display case. This Fiji mermaid has been put into the care of the captain to watch over and keep safe. 
Thank you so much to everyone that sent something in for the captain's bookcase. I will probably keep this open for one more video and then I will probably have to close it because look how many books we have. The bookcase on the upper floor is almost full. Some of the books will end up on the lower floor. So if you do want to send in a book for the captain's collection, I will leave that information below. That's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed it. I will have a link in the description for June's Journey. It is free to download and if you want to check it out, you can just go to that link, click on it, and it will take you to the download page. Thank you again to June's Journey for sponsoring this Bentley House Minis video and I will see you in the next one. Bye! I should turn this off.